Okay. Main gas just came on in this furnace. Yep. You see down there, main gas is on. Now what we're primarily looking at here is this fan switch. This fan switch is a little bit different. We don't use these anymore. Um, there are obviously a whole bunch of furnaces still got them. And I want you to watch that thing. Now this furnace is set up right now so it does not have a fan. The fan's not going to start on it. So this is a fan and limit. So as the temperature gets up, I think it's set for about 130. As the temperature gets up, that should have just turned the fan on. It did not. You notice this thing is rotating around. Now the next thing, ideally if this was working, the fan would be on, but it's not on. So as you watch this thing, you can see that thing rotate. And there's two switches on this, on this thing. There's one on this side, and there's one on this side. The one with the red wires going to it is the fan, and the one with the black is a limit switch. Now when that thing gets up a little bit higher, it's going to get to the mark where the uh, limit is. Now that's right there. Okay, we've reached the limit temperature and it shut off the burner just because this little silly thing is rotating about. And that's how the fan and limit switch operates. I'll pull that thing out and we can take a look at how it does it inside. Okay, here I've removed this fan and limit switch here and you can see this thing rotates back and forth like that. There's the probe. Now you look close at that thing, you can see there's a spiral bimetal. And that spiral is going to wind up and uh, wind back out as the temperature increases and decreases. And as this rotates back and forth because of the spiral, then it's going to make a switch over here or a switch over there. Uh, this was a general replacement fan switch. In this application, it really isn't, but it's got a low uh, voltage limit here that interrupts the control voltage to the gas valve. And this is high voltage here that operates the, the uh, blower motor. These things could be set up and because this is an OEM part, it's not going to have it. But there's usually, between here and here, there's a little copper strip. Let me see if I can get you in a little closer there to see. It's not on this one, but that's where it would normally be in a general replacement uh, switch. Right in there would be a... Uh, little copper strip. This could be set up so that power would come in to either side here and it would be jumped across to both sides so it's high voltage on both sides. Then power could go to the fan to turn on the fan and the limit was in high voltage and it would shut off the transformers what it would do. It was usually in series with the transformer lines. Uh, the reason I bring this up is if you put one of these in as a general replacement, they usually have that little strip right in there. And if you mix up the 24 and the 120, you're going to get something making sparks. You could end up with 120 volts at your thermostat. So anyway, that's, uh, that's a way this limit switch, fan and limit switch works. Uh, if it's being used as general replacement, you're supposed to take a pair of needle nose pliers and break the little thing in the middle. 
like I said, there's no, there, that thing is not on this one, but there's a place for it right there. In this case, high voltage is here for the fan, and this is low voltage. And that's the Honeywell, what I call the FNL or fan and limit switch.